It's been a few months since I've been able to be live with my fellow hairdressers due to COVID. Um, I haven't done or hosted a live since March, so I'm super honored to do my first one back here in the saddle with my good buddy Shay Dempsey. Many of you know that uh, Shay is featured with us once a month on behalf of Sebastian Professional. Shay Dempsey is the global artistic director for Sebastian. Uh, one of my favorite hairdressers, favorite haircutters. Incredible work with the blade and such a unique vision and just such a great guy. He was doing lots of great work from home in his garage <laughs> during COVID. So this is his first time back in the salon. The salon is now open here at Sunset Plaza here in LA, which is Shay Salon. They're back in business, thank God, because we all know it's not easy to be closed for a few months. We're sure we about how difficult it was. This is Shay's beautiful model, Chloe. Say hi, Chloe. Hello. She's in there. Yeah. Nice. Chloe's going to have uh, the masterpiece created by Shay Dempsey. I want to welcome the Sebastian uh, Global family, the tribe from around the world. Shay, take it away. I'll be looking for your questions and I'll be asking. I'm probably going to stick out a little bit further so that we can give some social distance here, but you'll hear my voice from the side. Take it away, Shay. Thanks so much, Gerard. And it is, it's great to be back. Great to be back on the salon floor as well. I'm sure everybody, some countries are later than others, but uh, getting used to wearing the mask, it's, it's never that easy. It's a little hot. So um, this is Chloe. So before we start, this is Chloe, she's obviously hasn't had a haircut in quite some time. How long, Chloe? Uh, it's been about a year. Been about a year, okay, great. So I wanted to show you, just before I started to cut the hair, what we have prepped for you today. And basically, the reasoning behind why I've done this beforehand is that Chloe has a huge amount of hair, and I really wanted you guys to actually see what I've done first. So basically what I've done is, I've just taken a little undercut, very, very small section right here, and it just works through here and then a diagonal line just to the back of the ear. And by taking that short through there, what it's going to do is we're going to reduce that weight and that bulk so it stops the hair from jumping out. So that when we press the hair back down, we'll have a little bit more of a flatter feel throughout. And I also did a little guide. So let me show you the guide. So as you can see, the section is a very repetitive section. We call it a teardrop. So it works from here works its way down and works its way right around. So you've got this really nice teardrop section. And we're going to use the blade and a combination of the blade and the scissor. You can start in so many different ways. I'm a very, very visual hairdresser. So what I wanted to do was this morning, I wanted to see where I was. So I basically took my first section. And if I can take that hair away right through here, you'll see what I did was I started to go really soft with the blade to the top of the ear. And then as I went around the head, I started to create this like a little mullet, but like a, still a blend, a connection, but it's very organic in its shape. So it works from here, here, and down. So you can start at the tip of the nose, start to get your length and then work or work from the ear down and work around. But Remember, we're using the blade, so we still have to follow a line. This is not just where we go a little crazy all the time with the blade. Yes, it can be creative, but yet we always have to follow a line. So, as I said, the teardrop started here, and it works its way down, and this is the next section we're working from. So I'm going to start at the ear, and I'm going to take out my section. A little bit of elevation on this so as I can actually see where my haircut was before. So that's important that we can see where we were before. So I'm always following a guide. There's a little bit of dark oil put in there, right through onto damp hair. And there's a little bit of potion nine light mixed in a water bottle. So the potion nine light mixed in the water bottle also helps the canvas of the hair to have that little bit more condition. And now if you can see the angle of the blade, and I'm gonna go from just working that blade Look, a brand new blade, it's the nicest feeling on the hair. Bang. It's Beautiful, Shay. Well, we've got some of our friends watching from around the world. I want to say hello to Yvonne Duda in Croatia. We've got Isak or Isaac in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Orlane is watching. Great to have you, Orlane, and the yeah. uh, team from Sebastian around the world. Amit is watching from India. Great to have everyone here. If you're just joining us, it was Shay Dempsey. Global Artistic Director for Sebastian. Please share your questions. She is an incredible teacher, a visionary in our industry, and he's got a lot to share. 
So Shay, as you're working there, you mentioned something about um, being a visual hairdresser. Mm. What, what do you mean by that exactly? Um, I almost, um, when I'm having a consultation or whether I'm doing something creative, I think of something in reverse first. So I almost see the image and then I try and break it down. So I'm a visual hairdresser in the sense of like, I work it out in my head or I visually try and see it. And then from that, I'll go, okay, so how would that actually work? So what is the process? What do I need to uh, create that look? So what tool am I going to use? What uh, product's going to help me get there? So everything that I do is very sort of like almost done in reverse. It's like a reverse consultation. Somebody br brings in a picture from Pinterest and you see this picture and you go, well, that really helps, but what's the process? So how do I t attack the hair? So is it like the tool I'm going to use on the type of texture of hair it is? What's the technique that I'm going to use? What's the sectioning pattern I'm going to use? So I'm very visual always in, um, it's the first thing I see. It's the what, first thing that it, 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 it brings me to towards the haircut. What would you say to a hairdresser that's maybe challenged by that, like they don't get the vision right away, maybe a young hairdresser, even an experienced hairdresser who's just used to following routine and doesn't really get vision? I think um, basically we all have to learn that, you know, that we all also have to learn that process of like making the mistakes and uh, knowing that that doesn't work or that was a failure or sometimes we don't know what tool is the best tool to use on the type of hair that you're going to use. So I think it's important for somebody young, um, and I always say this and people go, oh, I don't know why, copy, 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 copy. So if you like this haircut today and you see a picture of this haircut, copy it. I copied for so many, many years because it taught me um, how I could make it my own, number one. But number two was that, ah, you, learned, you made the mistakes as you went along. But by having something to copy, it was fantastic. Or if I could watch a video then, it was videos you could watch. Um, and I learned just basically from making mistakes. So uh, it trains your eye. It trains you how to look at something like shape and balance. It makes you look at sort of things that, um, why does it sit better on the head shape? And so many young people are in here. So they never leave the head, they're so intense and they're going like that. And it's sometimes so important to step back and actually look at something from a visual prospect. So like with Chloe, every now and again, I'll step back from the actual head shape so I can actually see it 360 because uh, younger people get so intense about their section, their tension, uh, their angle, whereas, you know, as we get older, they just become the norm. But we still have to step back. We still have to step back and really look at what we're doing. And, you know, looking at what we're doing to the hair and things like that. So, yeah, if there was any tips, would be to always cut hair with a white background or a white wall in your house and then to be able to step back and have a look at things as you're going. It is an art form. You know. Can you talk to us a little bit about the blade? I know that yeah. you have a methodology. Uh, what type of razor work? What, what do you call what you're doing right now? I know you yep. have a lot of names for your techniques. Yep. Even though you're visual, you still have a structure to how you execute. Absolutely. And it's, it's a really big part of Sebastian's education is that like, we still follow a lot of guidelines. We don't just go in willy-nilly. Uh, we don't go like where... We, we, we just really cut to shape by just reducing the weight and it's being quite aggressive. That's why I explained about the teardrop section and also how we actually use the blade. The blade is something that if, if you're not using it on the surface of the hair and you're not actually cutting onto the surface of the hair and the angle is wrong, it can be very aggressive and it can tear the hair. But if I take a section and just to show you here, if I come around, you'll see from my shortest point. When I lay the blade on, I always lay the blade on super, super flat like that. So then it's the pressure of the blade that will run down the head. I can see my guide underneath, so I can do this quite quick. But you can see that the hair is actually being cut instead of being torn. So it's very much about a combination of um, the hands not being so stiff, the angle of the blade and the pressure. So it's all about just that smooth flow of the hand working on the hair. You should really feel a very smooth um, cutting feel. 
If you ask Chloe, Chloe, can you feel that in your hair? Is there any tearing sensation or anything like that? No. So it, it, the client will tell you straight away. I mean, how many clients have said to you, I never want a razor being used in my head again. You know, it was a horrible sensation. I hated the way my hair was when it grew out. Um, can I just tell you, you know, hair brains sell, sell a lot of feather blades. They're the biggest, the hottest thing right now. But it's how they're used. So it's everything, and I hate saying it, but everything in the wrong hands is the wrong tool. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. It's like saying, you know, I never want to have my hair colored because it came out the wrong tone. Exactly. I never want anyone to use hairspray because yeah. my hair fell flat. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's who's using it and how it's being used. And exactly. It's used masterfully here by Shane Dempsey, yeah. for those of you that are just joining us. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please share the love. Let us know what you guys are thinking. And welcome to the Sebastian Tribe around the world. I know Shane has been trying to keep you guys inspired from his home garage, his home studio. Mm. But now he's back here in Salon, Sunset Plaza. We'll be back here every month doing lives with Shane again, which we love to do. And I'm guys just hope that you can tell I'm excited to be back. Yeah, it's great. And um, I'd just like to talk a little bit about this haircut as well. Please. I was telling the guys, it's, it's been very much inspired by COVID in the sense of um, since we've opened the salon, we've had a lot of hair coming back in that has grown out, but it's grown out in a nice way. So shorter hair has grown out and it has these sort of lighter, uh, sort of a lighter texture on the ends. Like, you, you know, it's almost like it, it, it needs a trim, but yet you don't want to trim it and make it too solid. So this haircut is going to be cut from damp to dry. So it's very much a organic uh, haircut that Chloe can actually wash and go. And I think it's very fitting uh, in these times that we're in that we're leaving something. Um, and she's even said it. I like the softer hair that's grown out. And I've really become attracted to this. And I've been working in the salon now for over three and a half weeks. And I'm doing a lot more softer haircuts, um, a little bit more organic in their shape. And uh, yeah, it was something when she came in, she said, I just want to change my hair. She was thinking of a very strong mullet, weren't you? You were thinking of something where she really wanted to go intense. And then I said, well, why don't we just do something that's like using the blade in its best potential would be something that sort of is super soft, very light through those ends, but yet it's gonna have strength. So again, I'm starting exactly where I was. The teardrop now has just moved and uh, we're not layering the hair too much or anything like that. We're really just doing the perimeter. So again, same angle and we start just to go through the hair. Shay, why are you choosing to cut everything at such a low elevation? So the, the lower elevation helps when you're using the blade, Gerard. So basically, sometimes if I come out here like so, and I start to work, it can work in my advantage, but sometimes it can reduce a little bit too much weight, and I end up taking too much bulk out. So when I use a lower elevation, like so, and I'm also working on the lower elevation, so I'm working in the natural fall. So I'm visually looking at what I want to create. But when you work with a lower elevation, the blade actually cuts through the hair just that little bit easier. And also I can actually see how much weight I want to take out. I can feel it more. So the higher the elevation, the more weight comes away because the pressure is now on the top. When it's down lower like this, you can actually apply the weight, you know, or apply the pressure. So um, it's doing two things. It's basically letting me see the shape. If I just take that little bit where now you can see, I'm actually, I call it cutting to shape, but I'm basically cutting the hair into the way it falls. And as I said, it's, it's something like this haircut is very organic. Um, it's the same, you know, you could say, oh, let's over direct everything here, but why not? Why just do this? Take it into its natural fall. I personally find some advantages cutting in natural fall that it's kind of um, easier to style, I think, sometimes. With yeah. Where, yeah. Not to say it's wrong to have massive over directions and massive elevations, no. but the, the internal structure of the haircut becomes more complicated for the client to manage, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the beautiful things about the razor. You, you can distribute the weight without having to over direct a lot or elevate a lot just by varying the, the way you use the blade. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, 
I know you, Gerard, you don't like to blow dry hair. I watched you, I watched you, uh, <laughs> I watched you, I watched you, over, demos I watched you over COVID with your 5,000 doll heads. But also you have people like clients, like Chloe here. Chloe probably doesn't even own a blow dryer. Right. So like the, the difference about when you cut with, you know, in the natural fall or zero elevation, like you are literally cutting yes, to the, to the way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What you see is what you get. Exactly that. So I'm just working through, dealing that nice length, so we can just let that sit, and we come to the other side. Going to give a shout out to some of our friends. We've got Olwyn watching from the UK, Kevin Martin, my, my buddy back in uh, the East Coast. Like, hopefully you're back at work, Kevin. Things are going well. Nancy Levante is here. Angelo Valilo gave me a little fire sign. Angelo. Guys, if you have any questions or you want to have a little bit of a chat with Shay about anything, please let me know your questions, your comments, your thoughts. I'll share them. If you're just joining us, it's my pleasure to be here with Shay Dempsey, the International Artistic Director for Sebastian, and uh, just a great guy in general. And uh, I know he's excited to be back in the salon. You said it's been three and a half weeks now. How's it going? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been going great. We were very, very busy. Um, we were just told on the Friday that we can open on the Monday, and then... As it turned out, then we had the protests on the Friday night, which scared us a little bit. So we had to board up the salon, but we got through it fine. And to be totally honest with you, clients were so desperate for haircuts. They wanted to come in the back door and we were very fortunate that we have got a back door so we could actually sort of um, bring them in. And we were manic for those three and a half weeks. I have to say it was, uh, it's very hard to get used to the mask. It gets really, really warm. Yeah. So we've got the AC pumped. Um, obviously our clients have to wear masks also and what you do find is that the clients haven't been anywhere so this is their first time in a salon to have to wear a mask for four hours so even yeah. they're feeling it uncomfortable yeah so the clients going would you mind if I stepped outside I just need to get some air because you forget that they haven't been anywhere either um, so I think it's important that we sort of take breaks um, for ourselves, I think it's important that we sort of just take that time out just to sort of go in and just sort of step outside for five or ten minutes. Are you scheduling some break times? So yeah, you exactly. You can't just do ten haircuts in a row. No, uh, no. And, and you know what? It's funny. Since COVID as well, I don't think I ever want to go back to that. Yeah. I've really had to think about that as a hairdresser and go, really, why do I kill myself Thursdays when I can just do maybe an extra two on a Friday? Yeah. Um, um, so basically, yeah, we've given ourselves a little bit more time. To it's kind of like a reset. It's a, you know? yeah, absolutely. And also we have to give ourselves time to clean the sections yeah. and barbicide the sections. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been totally different, taking people's temperatures, walking in the door. It's a whole new process. And I don't think it's going away, Gerard. I think we're here for quite some time. I'm sure it's till we get a vaccine. That's going to be, yeah. we're going to be in this but uh, practicing situation. all the best safety protocols. That's what you know. Hairdressers are doing it brilliantly. Yes. I've seen a lot of stories on social media. Shout outs to people like Van Council that kind of led the way. Want, they were one of early places to open and kind of set the bar high. And I've seen nothing but good things about hair salons. We know how to practice sanitation. Yes. We're licensed yes. for health and sanitation. Yeah. And uh, I'm just glad that so many of us are able to get back to work. Absolutely. It was, and it was a tough time, I can imagine. It no, was incredibly no tough. income for four months. No, it was incredibly tough. And, you know, as a salon owner as well, I mean, we were very fortunate that our landlord helped us in May. But other than that... But, I mean, that's a true blessing. Because yes. I, I'd say probably, conservatively, 50% of salons didn't get any help from, from anyone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we've, we've, we see the fallout. I mean, we just see Sunset Boulevard here in West Hollywood. You think... Oh, well, it's on, you know, it, it's bulletproof. Yeah. It's not bulletproof. There must be six units empty where people have just not been able to sort of hang in there. So it's very sad in ways. But, I mean, as you said, hairdressers really know how to sanitize. They know how to clean. So I think it's probably one of the safest places you could be in. Yeah, and that, those are the kind of comments we want to see. We want, you know, our guests to, to go out and go on Yelp and talk about yeah. how, how, you know, they felt so safe, um, yeah. and I think that's gonna help us get back into business. One of the things that we do in the salon now is that like when guests say to us, they say, wow, you know, we feel really comfortable here, we feel really secure here. 
I say, would you mind going out to Yelp and checking in? There's a check-in button. It doesn't. I'm not asking them to go and actually make a comment or anything like that. Of course, they can if they want. But why don't you just check in and say that you were here? Yeah. Uh, so little things like that, you know. And then usually they will leave a comment as well then at the end. So I'm just working my second last section here. And yes. as you can see, I'm not. I, yeah, I'm just going to tell you that your friend German from Argentina is sending a big hug. Oh, yeah, Herman. Herman. He, he's okay. a great guy. He's a great guy, Herman. So basically what we're doing here is we're, as I said, we're still working in the natural fall and we're working around the head shape. And we're not going in with crazy, crazy layers because, uh, again, you know, you have to work with what's in the chair with you at the time. And if I go in and start to really cut Chloe's hair by layering it too much, what we're going to find is that it's going to get poofy and it's going to get big and she's a very young girl she's a very trendy girl we don't want to have poofy hair um, so what we have is just so simple again we can start all our guides are all here you can see everything is underneath so by taking small sections it's so easy to be able to see everything that you've created and again don't take too much hair into the hand we're using a blade just keep everything nice and clean so that when that rests on there and you've got that nice section, it starts to cut the hair straight away. This is what they call a short skim. Um, so skimming hair does two things. It reduces the weight and the length. Um, but a short skim is really reducing less weight and, and just taking more length. If you want to elongate that stroke, well then you're gonna take more weight away. So if I wanted to fit it in a little bit more, I can just go a little bit higher. So you can see some of that top layer of that weight dispersing but by skimming the hair away what you're doing is diffusing the line all around but you're also reducing the weight so we are going to reduce some of the weight using the scissor and I wanted to sort of say that that you know you can do this with a scissor as well I'm not the guy who just you know only uses a blade the reason I use the blade is because of the person the person and the hair you know Chloe doesn't have a hair dryer. She's not the type of girl who styles her hair constantly. Um, she likes a more grown out organic feel. So the blade and the hair texture is perfect for the blade. Like there's not that many, like if you look, like it just cuts the hair like perfectly. So I don't use the blade on curly hair. I've never used it on curly hair. I don't use it on over compromised hair. So little things like that, if there's anybody sort of, you know, a young assistant out there, you know, choose the hair you're gonna use it on so as you can have fun with it yourself. You don't wanna have a bad experience for the client or you don't wanna have a bad experience for yourself. I have two questions for you, uh, yep. Shay. Uh, I've got them all saved up because nice. uh, I haven't been able to, to host since March. First is, why the teardrop section? And then secondly, I noticed that you kind of hold the blade very close up rather than going yep. down the handle. Yep. Do you always hold it that way or do you hold it in different places sometimes? Um, well, to be honest, what I like to try and do is with the holding it closer to, to the hair like that, I am inclined to do a little bit of turning with my hand. So with the angle, I feel that I, I know the pressure so I can feel it. I'm closer to it. When I'm out here, so if I take it out here, I feel I'm very far away and I can't feel the pressure. I feel I'm a little disconnected. Once I come back in closer, let me take that section a little cleaner. When I come in closer, I feel much more connected to the hair and where I want to apply the pressure. And then I can break my wrist a little bit and I can actually feel the pressure a little bit more. So it's more about actually feeling the pressure because that's really how you take the weight away. Have you ever seen the, the version of this feather style razor that has a very short handle? No. I'll have to get one for you. Wow. There's one where it's I'm just going to move your head over. Razor, yeah. The handle is probably two or three inches shorter. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's all about, for me, I suppose, that your fingers get sensitive to the pressure and you can actually feel it cut the hair. So I, the closer I am to the hair, I can actually go in there and then just go, sometimes I want to go in and detail it, lighten it. So I just feel it's a little bit more sensitive. The teardrop is, for me, um, really, really simple to do. I mean, what do we want to do? We want to create something that works from that middle section here to shorter to longer. So if you think about it, it starts wider so we can take in, first part is the fringe. So everything works from this, angles its way up, 
and it drops its way down. The section reflects that. So the, obviously the head's not a box, so when the head's turned, so if we take a round section and bring it down into the nape, it's the same line. So it's almost like we're following, cutting the perimeter as the teardrop, if that makes any, any sense. So that like basically you can't get lost. And the biggest thing about this hairpin, and if, if, uh, you, if I was teaching this, is where you start and where you finish. So basically, I would have started here, and I've worked my perimeter line. You can't get lost. You're not going to be one side shorter, one side longer, because you've laid down the line. So whether you did that with a scissor or you did it with a blade, all you have to do is do the next one and drop it down, drop it down, drop it down. So for me, it's just really something that's very natural, you know, and, that's, and I, when you, especially when you're working in the natural fall, you're not over directing anything, so you just comb it all down and then you can actually see your line underneath. So as you take down this next section, can yeah. you talk to us a little bit about what's happening with Sebastian? I mean, yeah. obviously during these times you guys would normally be out doing shows and shoots and yeah. education and you're a world traveler. Um, what what is the plan for keeping Sebastian here for as inspired? What do you guys have? Uh, I know a lot of Europe is maybe ahead of the US in terms of being more open. Yep. Will you be traveling soon? What, what's happening in Sebastian artistic world? Um, well, you know, through COVID, uh, the, the team in uh, Geneva, the global team, basically asked me would I start to work and prepare for the, the shoots that we should have been doing in May and July and things like that. So I did a lot of work where I've actually seen everybody work on doll heads and I thought, well, I can actually start to do the shoots on the doll heads first, take the pictures, send them to Geneva, and if they give me the green light and they like the ideas, well, then that's my preparation done for when we do shoot. So. Um, and, and, and like every big brand, we, we have to think of like, you know, this is all going to end and we're going to start to shoot again. So we start to shoot again, hopefully in September. And we are concentrating on two shoots. Uh, we are getting right back into education and we've revamped the education system in Sebastian. And we've looked at everything that we do like hero products, like hero techniques. Um, as you know, we mastered the blade. So like 40 years we've been using the blade. So we really want to sort of expose the techniques that we've sort of created. Um, because, as you know, the blade is super hot at the moment. Everybody yeah, wants to use is, the blade. Time is right, isn't so, it? Yeah. yeah, and we've been in this situation for so many years that why don't we? Yeah. So um, that we're working on. And then we have a, a lot of really cool new products that have been, we've been sitting on to sort of launch, but we haven't been able to. So uh, we're going to do a shoot for that too. Can so, you tease us at all and, and tell us well, just generally what's in the pipeline? Any little teasers of Sebastian yeah, products? Yeah, there's, there's some really, really good stuff, to be honest. Um, there is one product that sort of um, is, well, we have a few creative products and then we have a few amazing products that will help the clients. So for the hairdresser, there's, a, there's a, 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 a lotion, that's all I can say, that does two things, but it can bond the hair in the most incredible way. So that I, I, that I can talk about, which is absolutely amazing. I'm super excited about that. And we're gonna bring out a little haircut collection that comes with that too. And then there is a real, re, a, a real styling revamper um, that I can't really talk about, but it's Absolutely. amazing styling it's, products. It's, it's yeah, it's a styling. strong styling product. Without a doubt, I think yeah. you know, most uh, hairdressers know Sebastian as a company that's always been on the cutting edge of the types of products. I mean, I can yeah. remember being even at almost a kid when mud came out. Yeah. Like, this was like changed everything. Yeah. So continuing in that, in that route. And then I know you were working with Dark Oil here. Yeah. This yeah. is definitely one of the, the new hero products. Yeah. It's got a whole family now. It is. There's a shampoo, a conditioner, a mask. There's um, a, a mist, like um, there's this type of a mist that you can just basically spray into the hair, which has got an oil, an argan oil in it. But right. instead of it being super heavy, what it will do is it'll just coat the hair. So you can use it on dry hair, you can use it on damp hair, you can use it as a cutting tool. Um, 
So yeah, it's become because it was such a big seller. It has become now. Like, it smells wonderful mm. too. By it the does way. even <laughs> even the mask. I <laughs> it does smell good. So again, my if you can have a look at just what I'm doing here is I'm now elongating the stroke just at the end so we don't have something that's super boxy. So if you can just see this section here, I'm just gonna move Chloe's head. So you can see it's now fitting into the head. So by just taking um, my section, and from here now, I'm gonna start to elongate that stroke just to take the squareness off. So I'm just going in, and I'm just taking a little bit more weight out because as I said, we don't wanna have a super strong mullet that sort of sticks out. We still want this to sort of sit in a way that it's, you know, nice and organic. So Look if these the stick out. Out, Shay. We've got Michael Giorgiani watching, Wudu Hadapad. I, I think that's a Finnish name. Wow. Yeah. Tony Jennings, our friend down in Austin, and Christina McCarper is watching. Hey, Christina. So, um, yeah, there we go. It's just nice and soft. And let me just shake this out a little bit. So we get this really nice, soft sort of shape. But isn't it amazing how sometimes grown out COVID hair can inspire you? And it's been cool. Is it that, you know, that kind of wispiness and flexibility around the edges that kind of caught yeah, your Yeah, and it's even like, see like these little bits that sort of kick out like that naturally because you've just reduced that weight. You can just see that it almost looks like it's been, it's grown out. So it's very, very organic in its shape. So let me just finish this side here. We need to sort of blend that in just a little bit more now. Now, so I know that you're not a colorist, Shay, but yep. here in the salon, I'm sure lots of people are coming in for color. Yep. What, what's that been like, seeing a lot of really grown out hair and any advice? Uh, um, I, I mean, it's funny. It's a little bit like the haircuts. Even though people have had roots, it's sort of been nice. And you can see that people have looked at it and have sort of said, um, well, maybe if it comes back, maybe we shouldn't go in and go crazy with the color again. Maybe we should just do something that's a little bit softer. I'm sort of liking the shadow. So you can actually see that people um, didn't get that crazy, the fact that the hair, especially the blondes, when the roots started to grow out, um, they were sort of liking that shadow and that little bit more dimension in the hair. So I think that maybe we've sort of you know, you've had a few that have taken hours to repair, but there's been a lot of them as well where people are going, maybe just do some baby lights. Maybe just sort of put some darkness through it so that if this happens again, I know everybody's, yeah. really, if this happens again, <laughs> and we're like, oh dear God, if this happens again. But you know, people are going for something that looks a little bit more natural. It's too, one or the other or else they're changing it. So it's like, no, I'm sick of this color, make it dark. I don't want to be blonde anymore. Make it rich, make it shiny. I'm over all this dryness. Get shade to cut this. I'm sick of my hair, you know? So, um, but in general, it's been great. And I think you know what it's been. It's just been so great to be back and actually doing hair. And we're, you know, hairdressers are born to talk the talk and walk the walk and enjoy what we do. So I think it was really hard for a lot of hairdressers not to be in the salon. I mean, I'm not in the salon all the time, but I really do love it when I'm here. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's what we do, you know, it's what we do best. So, and I don't think I would be an educator for, or be as creative if I didn't do salon work. Yeah, I agree. I've mean, always felt that, you know, I, I saw the clientele, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get to the email yep. since March, but I keep in touch with email, and email. Yep. I'm hoping to get back in August. Yep. Um, but, to be a great educator or a great communicator to other hairdressers, I think you still need that salon time. So I'm glad that you agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And also I think that what happens with um, people that sort of aren't doing hair as much, I was fortunate that I was doing quite a lot of hair like you were, Gerard, in, in COVID, but your hands slow down. Yeah. And you become slower at what you actually would normally just take and just rip into. And um, I think, you know, if I hadn't got those quick hands, when I'm on shoots for Sebastian, or thinking quick. It makes you think quick, you know, like you've got maybe six clients in in a day, and maybe you've got time, but maybe you have eight clients in. And sometimes you really have to visually see it, and then you visually have to get going. Um, so it keeps your hands fast, and it keeps your mind fast as well. So uh, yeah, I do about three or four days a week in the salon, and I love it, I absolutely love it. 
And um, I had to find my own because I'm a little bit edgier. So in LA, that was a little tricky to find people willing to. You don't do beach waves. And I, <laughs> he knew his hair. Yeah, yeah, he knew his hair. No, but. You know what? I found them. It took me a little bit of time, and there are people out there that like to get like. There is a cool undercurrent of Absolutely. edgy people now. Right? Absolutely. You always think of the top, the blonde, and the e news hair. Like, yeah. There's definitely a very cool, like like your model Chloe. Absolutely, and and you've been here for the other girls. These are all yeah. clients of mine. Yeah. So like, there's definitely people that are willing to go that little step further and are individual. Put it that way. And I love that about LA, that there are people that, I mean, I think LA, you can be whoever you want to be, you know? Well, you know, when I first moved here in the 90s, there was a, a big sign on the 405 for a clothing brand called Charabari. Okay. And they were like a New York uh, fashion house. Yeah. And they had a big sign on the 405 that said, just because you live in LA doesn't mean you have to dress that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's come a long way from the sense that. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, I'm Gerard Scorpacey, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. I'm here with Shay Dempsey, who is the Global Artistic Director for Sebastian Professional. We're back to our regular monthly gig here, practicing some safe protocols. But we wanted to get back to bringing you this live education, and I wanted to hang out with some great hairdressers. So we're going to keep doing this. We'll be getting back in the studio and bringing you great education. I want to thank everyone for doing all the incredible takeovers. And let's get back to Shay's haircut. It looks like he's making some moves. Yeah. So I just want to, before we start, I just want to go into now the natural fall. And you can see that the blade is now gone. The feather blade is, is put away. And now we have the scissor. So again, this is very visual. So I'm just going to sort of get the hair ready for what I'm going to do with the scissor. And it's a sort of a, like a deep channel cutting situation. Sorry, Chloe. There we go. It's gonna, as I said, always good to get the hair prepared, just to make sure that everything is balanced. So I'm just gonna soften that out there. And now a little bit of water spray. And there's a little bit of potion nine in that water spray as well. So now I can just see where I want to slice out this weight. Maybe just a little bit more water. And again, you know, I think always step back and have a little look at your shape. Maybe spin it around. Have a look at where you want to reduce that weight, where you want to reduce that length. As I said, this is a very, very, very grown out look. So it's extremely sort of like inspired by COVID. So it's really, really soft. So now I want to go in and want to reduce the weight, but I want to go in with the scissor. So, I'm just going to move little sections like so. And for, why am I starting here? Because usually on the rounding of the head, the thicker hair, it's inclined to get a little bulbous. So by going in and not at the root, because we don't want the root to stick out. So just about an inch and a half down, I just want to go through and just slice out some pieces. And I always start at where I think that weight is. Um, let's take my hair as an example. I have very fine hair on top, but the sides have that curl, so it always grows out first, and I start to look like my dad. So it's that roundness. I want this to grow out into something else. So it's reducing the weight so that it grows down. So again, I just take out some little sections, but keeping in mind that I'm putting everything in its natural fall. So here, just put that blade in and just slide it down. And I just really like the scissor doing this because it cuts the hair and it just reduces that weight and I can really feel it in my hand. So it's just reducing everything and I can take and the next Kind step. of an invisible effect, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't see those channel marks anymore no. if you tried to look for them. Yeah, and I suppose that's the thing. You don't want to have, and I don't like to go over the top too much, but now I can feel I'm on the rounding so I can just go in and by nearly going vertically down, we're not etching. So if we go too horizontal, you get too much of an etching, whereas this way we just sort of move with the head and go down, so it's in, turn it, and go down. Do you feel that that gives the hair some direction as well in terms I, I, of pushing I do. it? I do, because I feel that like with Chloe, she's not gonna wear her hair completely like this. What she's gonna wear her hair is like basically very messy and she's gonna have it more sort of like this type of shape. It's gonna be sort of just bang, there it is. So what we don't want is that it's to get too mushroomy or too bulbous. Right. Um, it's a little what they call a liposuction for the hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
So, but it could easily end up that it's too heavy. So by just separating the hair, you can go in with your hand then this mm. way, and you can actually start to turn your hand, go down, leave a little gap, so you're not gonna have any too spiky. Getting a lot of love for your new cut, Chloe. Christina McCarver loves the cut. Hey, thank you, Christina. Joanne Bannister is loving it. But as I said, you know, this is something that hopefully Chloe's gonna really like because it's, it's very organic and uh, it's something now. If you wanted to change the direction, actually when you say that you could go in this way and you could take that front layer away like that, but I'm still going in here and just gently going through and just slicing out that weight. And now the same in the back. It's a little heavy here, so let's follow that teardrop around and we can see here, so I can stand on this side and now just go in from here and then slice that out. So really a combination of two um, simple techniques, the kind of uh, low skimming with yep. the razor and then were you calling the slicing or channeling? Yeah, or? yeah, like almost like channel cutting, you know, so that basically the scissor is doing one thing where it's just reducing that weight and it's still keeping it nice and organic. Um, and yes, the blade has basically taken away length and it's also softened the perimeter because the skin was actually quite short. You know, the skin wasn't an, an elongated skin. But what we don't want to have is a page boy. You know, we don't want to have something that looks too bulky and too heavy. And if it sticks out here, I'm all for it. Let me tell you, I don't want the hair to be too square, uh, too round, too bulbous. So it's a case of just going in and just taking out a little bit of that weight so it sort of fits the head a little bit more. Um, fitting the head and, 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 as I said, cutting to shape is, to me, it's, it, it's, so, it's so organic in its way because you're just watching it all the time and you can see now it's starting to fit her head. Uh, and that's the cool thing about using scissor or sometimes cutting in the natural fall. I'm not always cutting hair in the natural fall, but for these type of haircuts, I much prefer it. So again, you can see the weight's gone from here, but now we have this area here. So we just wanna go in almost from the occipital bone and then just go in a little deep. And do you just pop the head a little, Chloe? Thank you. And then you can just go in here and just reduce that as well. Shay, all your uh, tribe from around the world uh, giving you lots of love. Ah, Herman great. is still here. Great. Uh, Orlane is excited about your combination of techniques. Yeah, thank you, Orlane. MC is watching Randy. MC, who's Ran MC? That's Randy. Randy's Marika. girl. She, she's probably making sure the camera Randy. works all right. Yeah. <laughs> Checking on your camera work. I always say, how did Randy get MC? <laughs> <laughs> That's every, everybody's question. <laughs> Yeah, I think she has a very beautiful, beautiful girl. She's a beautiful person as well. Both yeah. of them are. So mm. I have to say, they're a good, they're a good couple. My good buddy Lee Clapson is here. I haven't uh, connected with oh, Lee in a long hey, time. Lee. Lee's a great razor cutter as well. So do you want to tell them what we're going to do when this COVID thing is over? Well, we've been talking about it for a while. We, and have. we need to really do it. You know, yeah. both, uh, you know, Shay and I love cutting with the razor and the blade. Um, some of you guys might know I cut with a folding razor or open razor. Um, and I don't have a lot of experience with the garden razor and kind of vice versa with oh, Shay. So we so wanted to do like a little jam where we can both teach each other. Yeah. Because uh, I always learn and actually when we started these, I know about six, I don't even know how many times, means nothing a year ago. Yeah. Uh, I first started to pick up the garden razor after working with Shay, and I incorporated it into some of my classes because I just wanted to, to just throw it out there. And then you were saying you were doing the same thing with open razor. So yeah, so I got a present from a company, and I can't remember the name of the company, but it's such a beautiful blade, and I will post it. Um, and it's an open blade with a black bone, um, and it's it looks amazing, but it scares the life out of me. So Randy, or not Randy, Gerard was doing a haircut uh, early or late last week and I watched him and how he pushes the, the, the blade away so it doesn't you know, hit the person or put his hands and I've never used one before. So uh, when he said to me, look, you know, we could do a jam session, I'm like all over it. So I can't wait to know how to use it in the right form. Yeah, because, I this oh, I'm telling you. It has you to want to invite some more friends here in LA? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we've got a big salon and we can, yeah. we can do a sort of some type of an evening where it's, 
you know, a creative evening, but I need to know how to live. Like, I've learned a lot over COVID. I really have. I mean, um, you never stop learning. And I just the way people uh, look at hair, you know, it's been so interesting. And I mean, I've watched, I don't, I can't know how many haircuts I've watched. Um, yeah, that's the great thing. I mean, I think as an industry, there was an outpouring of, of education going over. Yeah. Yeah. And even now, you know, uh, hairdressers who are realizing maybe they're not as well rounded in their skill with different textures. Yeah. We're starting to see a lot of different texture education, which we 100% support. Now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know that that saying, so many, there's so many ways to skin a cat, my God, how to cut hair. I mean, mm -hmm. to see how people cut hair in so many different ways, it was incredible. Uh, so I really enjoy that side of it. And, 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 you know, I mean, to see the industry come together as well was pretty incredible. You know, that was just unbelievable. So with a technique like this, uh, channel with the channel the scissor, yeah. how do you know how much to do? How do you know when to stop? How do you know when you've done enough? Yeah, it's a great question. It, you know what, it's very visual. And you can see I just um, got Chloe's hair a second ago and just put my hand through and I just shook it out. So it's usually very much on feel, um, and then visually looking at the weight, looking at the balance, looking at you know how the hair is sitting. Sorry, Randy. Just you know, and just basically being a hairdresser, like just don't hesitate to stop, um, and you know, run your fingers through the hair, step back, feel it, you know, and just sort of see how it's going. You know, like it doesn't have to be perfect, but you'll know, you'll know that feeling. And, you'll know when the hair starts to move in, it, in itself that you'll start to get like little cool shapes. You know, yeah, you know when you're cutting just like a geometric shape, it's square or lighter, so when everything's cut and blended and checked, you're done. You're done. But when you're cutting like this, there's so much feel. Yes, exactly. And like, like even there, so it's just sat in a way that, see this, so I really like that there. It's really pretty. So I'm not going to go anymore. I mean, I just like that. Do I want to take a little bit more weight at the back? But I'm, I'm sure we can just do this and it'll, it'll just take that corner off and then I think we're done. I want to give a shout out to some of my Italian friends that are watching. Alberto Bucciardi is watching, my good friend over in Italy. And Cristiano Cora, also Italian, who lives in New York. He's watching, great to have you guys here with us. Uh, if you just joined us, I'm here with Shane Dempsey today, who is the Global Artistic Director for Sebastian. This is something that we had been doing regularly with Shay every month. We stopped in March, and now we're picking back up in July, and hopefully we can keep doing it every month. Yeah. So I think I'm done. So I'm just literally just going through, taking off that little corner, you know, so I'm just sort of softening it out by just doing a sort of a deep point cut. It's not anything, you know, perfect, but I'm just going to check everything through. Just pull it out again. So it was just kind of the weight that was above the... It was the, just, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, and even when we went in deep, it, it, there was still a little bit too much length, so it, it felt a little boxy to me. So now by taking that in, you can see it's a little bit softer. So um, it just sort of, it helps it from not looking. Remember we mentioned about that page boy. We don't want a page boy. We want something that's just basically really natural. So... Coming together beautifully. You know, Thank one you. of the things I love, and I, I notice this whenever I get a chance to work with you, you know, you just work in such a simple way, but then it just has so much impact. It doesn't seem like you, know, you, you feel the need to do anything extra complicated in terms of the technique. No, and I, I, I don't know whether that's just me. I try and break things down to keep them as simple as possible. And through COVID, and I watch people, and I love the fact that they can be so technical, and angles, and precision, and the way it leaves the head. Um, maybe my dyslexia, confuse that, you know, maybe that was something that I had to work with as a, as a hairdresser being dyslexic, sometimes lefts and rights can go, but I don't have that problem actually, I just have problems of like, digesting certain things, so I, I worked to make things simple for myself, and I think maybe that's part of it, but I'm not too sure, but I think, you know, sometimes less is more, eh? Yeah, well, whatever the reason is, it works yeah. beautifully, as you can see here on Chloe's really super, you're getting so many... Uh, great compliments, beautiful, such a cute cut. I appreciate this so much. I've been doing more wash and wear styles. That's coming from Janet. 
We've got Simon watching from India. Thank you, Janet, for saying her room is the best ever. Hey. Well, so let me just, like, I don't want to do too much because it is something that Chloe's going to play with. But even if she does it this way, um, there's another side where she'll just be able to throw it around. Um, and just literally, it is what it is. You know, it's a really cool little shape. Even if she took some behind her ear like this, she has this hair that she can play with. I can tell she's smiling. Okay, could you show, <laughs> could you show us a smile? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but yeah, you just throw a little bit of product in there. Um, what, what, what would be something you might recommend? I know that you yeah. were working with um, yeah, the, I, the different dark oils, the spray and the, and the lit lotion. Yeah, I mean, the dark oil is, is great. Or you could use a little bit of like something with a little bit of moisture or a little bit of hold, like a molding mud. Like where you would just put a little bit of molding, because she's going to let her hair dry naturally anyway. So the molding wood might just give it a little bit of direction for her and it'll sort of stay moisturized as well. So it'll just sort of fall. Um, so I would think something like that, but really the dark oil doesn't weigh the hair down that much. So you get this nice sort of volume and movement and you know, it's just nice and organic in its own way. You can play with this all day. Well, thanks again, Shane, for sharing yeah. with us. Uh, guys, we'll be back regularly. I'll be trying to host as many as we can now, do some social distancing, wearing a mask. Uh, I want to thank everyone who did all the incredible takeovers over the past few months um, to keep the education going. I want to thank our great model, Chloe, for having this great change. Thank you. Special thanks to Sebastian Professional for the ongoing support of Hairbrain and helping us bring great education. Share yeah, any final words? No, no, thank you so much. And as I said, it's great to be back with Hairbrain. Hopefully, we see you every month and uh, keep it going. Excellent.